Hi, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm the editor-in-chief of National Fisherman Magazine, Jessica Hathaway. And today I've got on the line Eliza Yeager and Adam Sewell, who are in California. They're commercial fishermen, and they're going to talk to us about um, what they do for work, what they did before the pandemic, and how they pivoted to keep working and keep fishing. So with that, I'm going to head it over to Eliza. Hey, Jess, thank you. Um, so my husband and I, we have a, a commercial fishing vessel, The Gatherer, out of the Berkeley Marina in um, the San Francisco Bay. We fish for halibut, salmon, and black cod, and also run a charter business as well. And um, we also have been making black cod pots. Yeah, another big part of what we do is we have, um, with, uh, with our partner Alex Stubbs, we've developed and manufactured a new type of uh, black cod fishing gear that is especially well suited to uh, small boats. Um, it's being adopted by large boats also, but it's basically a, um, a spiral collapsible black cod pot that can either be snapped onto um, a boat that's set up for, for long lining, um, or it can replace uh, the, the large rigid pots yeah, on, heavy, uh, on larger boats pots, that are yeah. already set up for, yeah. for pot fishing. Um, so that's been really cool. Uh, we've caught a lot of black cod with them and we're, we've started to sell quite a number of them. Um, we're having them manufactured for now in China. So when this whole Corona thing started, um, it must have been about three months ago, our whole production in China was stopped. Um, so uh, things are just starting to get back to normal um, for our pot production in China, but we're looking like we're at least six months behind on orders. So yeah. luckily we just had a container that got to Seattle, but um, yeah, that was kind of the first impact we had was yeah. that. Even before thing, anyone had heard, heard about, about it, it yeah, it was actually yeah, the production of the pots. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then after, then after that, uh, we're just about to start um, our, uh, our charter business up for the spring, halibut are biting, and um, then that we got this stay in place and had to close that part of our business until, um, until further notice, until that's lifted. So uh, we pivoted back kind of to our roots in commercial fishing, and that is uh, where we're going strong right now. And we're doing it with our three kids who um, we're homeschooling on the boat, uh, which we're calling the School of Fish. Yeah, it's been really fun to have the kids on the boat. It's, um, you know, this time of year, they're obviously in school and pick up and drop off schedules don't really work that well with, um, with a fishing schedule. Um, so it's just been a really great time to have everybody on the boat. We've got a kindergartner, a third grader and a nine month old. Yeah. Um, so everybody's on the boat. Yeah, and got the pack and play play and pin out on <laughs> in the middle of the fishing boat. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty wild scene. Yeah. Yeah, and how big is your boat? Twenty eight feet. Yeah. <laughs> so small boat. it's a small boat, and it's packed with yeah, packed with you know, cooler, a fish cooler, a play pen, um, and all. Uh, you know, we have a tiny, a tiny classroom on there with all the, the books that we're working on. Um, yeah, so we're doing work workbooks and art class and science and um it's it's really cool our oldest daughter hazel has really gotten into tying knots so she's been learning new knots and she's making videos to teach other kids you can see her bowling knot um and how to tie cleat right now up on our instagram page she's pretty excited about that and it's just it's really exciting to Sort of, I mean, there's a lot of things that are really challenging. You know, financially, this is really challenging, and and you know, it's 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 a, an abrupt change to everyone's routine. But um, it's also it just really provided us with this opportunity um, to be doing what we love as a family. Um, and to, we've always said it would be great if we could fish together more as a family. Yeah. Um, and now we're now we're yeah. having to put that into practice, and yeah, it's been really great. Yeah, and just in the way in which you know this um, that this crisis has kind of pushed this moment of the family, and individual families are kind of coming like are kind of um, forced together into their small nuclear units, and we're all just doing the things that we were doing before, but now our kids are really involved in it, and they're seeing our world, and we're more part of their world, and. Um, yeah, there's definitely challenges of, you know, at first I was just trying to say, like, oh my God, how can we reproduce and stay on top of all the schoolwork? 
And then I sort of like sat back in it and realized, okay, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna stay on top of things, but also let's lean into the things that traditional education are not covering, which is practical skills and um, just a whole a whole way of life for us of fishing that um, could be lost to younger generations. And so we're pretty excited to be able to pass these these yeah, skills on to the, them. The girls are getting some pretty intensive uh, commercial fishing uh, education. Yeah, great. and they're super into it. Yeah, that's really just so inspiring. I feel, <laughs> um, I feel, I feel really good about where I am with my kids being at home. I cannot imagine being boxed into twenty-eight feet. Um, <laughs> but I think what you're doing is just really fantastic and inspiring. And I hope that sharing your story inspires other fishing families to, like you said, lean into what you've got and yeah. the yeah. best of it. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, the timeline? So your your pots, your pot production got shut down. When did your area, when did schools close and the charter fishing close? And and you're still fishing, so you are still selling. Yeah, so we, everything closed, our, our production really closed. Right yeah, our production ended up closing in January. And then our schools closed and our stand place happened in March and then towards the end of March. Um, and uh, so- um, We've been, it's the shelter in place has been going for two weeks or so? Three, yeah, I've been going third week. three weeks, yeah. yeah. Um, and what's really challenging for commercial, commercial fishermen in this area is that the markets have really dried up because- well, Restaurants are all closed. Yeah, and and like 80% or something of seafood is consumed in restaurants. Yeah, so. that's been the biggest problem is that none of the markets, our traditional outlets for, um, for high quality local fish are, are totally shut down, mm -hmm. as well as the whole Chinese market. So the crab price tanked, the black cod price is tanked, yeah. um, and just the volume that the buyers are able to handle um, has gone way, way down. Yeah. Um, so we are lucky to have an uh, old friend and- um, Another amazing fishing family. Another fishing family. They run a, um, a company called Sea Forager, yeah. where they deliver uh, local seafood um, directly uh, to people's houses. Yeah, this is Kirk and Camilla Lombard. Kirk yeah. and Camilla Lombard, uh, great folks and old friends. Yeah. So, um, yeah. they, uh, their business has actually taken off quite a bit. They have done the CSF, uh, Community Supported Fisheries, thing for years. Um, so in this time when people um, don't want to go to the grocery store and uh, there's all these restrictions on movement, their business has, has blown up quite a bit. And we are so grateful for them um, yeah. providing us a market for our uh, our hook and line halibut. Yeah, and it's also I think and that, salmon coming up. Um, yeah, hopefully salmon will open in the next uh, yeah six weeks or two yeah. months. And I'm just you know again I was looking for the silver lining and things you know that I think also because of um, you know because of the overseas markets um, crashing in production and everything being shaken up that way. There is a, like local, low, the, like local, very small, um, small radius uh, seafood and services are really, um, you know, we were like I said, going to our big grocery stores where everyone's hitting like the corner bodegas and the little markets. And um, yeah, so, you know, small fishing families getting fish from, from the San Francisco Bay, bring it right, you know, to, to a community. So oh, here are our girls. Hi. Yeah. So hopefully some, of the, some hopefully of the, some of that will carry on afterwards. Yeah, and, there's a potential that people yeah. will kind of get in touch with their local seafood and that could become a um, a larger part of people's lives coming out of this pandemic. Yeah. Um, this is Hazel and Rye. That's great. Yeah, can you introduce us to the kids? Yeah. Yeah, you guys want to introduce, introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Hazel. Hi, Hazel. I'm Rye. I'm Rye. So like a nasty fall on the dock today and bumped her head on. The oh <laughs> no! How are you yeah. feeling? Not, not great. Not a great time to go to the hospital, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And okay, I'll stay safe. <laughs> yes, yeah. everyone, be extra careful out there. Yeah. 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 So, do you guys like being on the boat? Yeah. 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 Do you miss school, or do you or do you feel like you're where you need to be? I like being on the boat more than I like being at school. You feel like you're keeping up with your schoolwork on the boat? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm doing I'm okay. I'm yeah. learning things you wouldn't and, and I'm learning things I wouldn't learn in school, like how to cleat a line and how to tie a bowl and knot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
So you guys are also, you're all documenting this journey. Can you tell the people watching where they can catch up with you online? Yeah, absolutely. We're, yeah, we're at uh, gatherer underscore outfitters on, uh, on Instagram <laughs> and uh, on Facebook. Also gatherer outfitters, yeah. Uh, Gathereroutfitters.com. Um, that's kind of uh, where we push our, uh, our charters and stuff like that. Um, but we are using that to document our, our commercial fishing that we're doing now so check us out there yeah yeah and we'll continue to yeah just document the experience and um yeah just i think really just you know focus on what is special and unique about being a fishing family in this moment um yeah it's great it's a great story and i'm really excited to keep following you guys so for for our last little bit before we head out um before we close this out i'd like you to just give a little advice to other fishing families who find themselves in similar circumstances um i, mean, I would say rely on the you know the things that you have yeah. you know on, on your kids on the uh, great source of food that you have available yeah. to the community of other fishermen around you. Um, you know, it's time to get back to, to the basics and exactly. um, things that are the most important, you know, we're not going to make a ton of money. We don't have markets for a huge amount of volume. Um, yeah. So we gonna, we're going to keep things small and yeah. uh, we're gonna eat, yeah. yeah, eat a lot of fish <laughs> and <laughs> you know, eat fish. a lot of fish, share that fish, you know, with people in your, in your small world, um, yeah, stay small and and really you know lean into you know in this like this big modern fast paced world, just lean into this this really special moment where everything is you know slow and small and you know just just the family. That's great. I love hearing that. And okay, so one last thing, um, I just want to make sure that anyone who's watching this who is local to you, who might be interested in buying your fish, where specifically should they go to order some fish? Um, they should check out Sea Forager, um, and they can check that, that out on, on also Instagram and Facebook, and I think uh, www.seaforager.com as well. And yeah, I they can't can recommend them enough. They really, um, people with a lot of integrity who care a lot about local fish, um, you know, getting a subscription to uh, their community supported fisheries program really will teach you about the seasonality of, of local fish and uh, make sure that you get a, a taste of the top quality, local, um, sustainably sourced fish. Yeah. That's great. I am so excited to share this and I hope that you have a great season. Thank you so much for joining us. Best okay. of luck and definitely keep in touch and we'll be following you. Yeah, right. uh, one more thing. Uh, if if uh, you or the viewers want to see more about these uh, black cod pots, the website is uh, longlinepots.com, longlinepots.com. And yeah. Uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, we're behind schedule in production, but uh, we're super excited about um, yeah. about this new, new technology. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.